This is Star Wars Squadrons. We're on Xbox Series X taking a look at this space-focused Star Wars game. We haven't had a game quite like this in a very long time, and it's actually kind of exciting to see. It looks really great on the console, it's actually quite gorgeous, and it does actually provide two different options that we can enjoy when it comes to visual choices. So as you can see here in the video, we have two selections. We have favor resolution, and we have favor performance. So the big change here is really going to come down to the frame rate and also there is a better lighting model when you do the visual quality. So first up we have the visual quality mode. So that's a up to a native 4K resolution at 60 FPS. So I assume they mean some sort of dynamic resolution scaling is in play, but it runs very smoothly and it looks stunning. Now the other mode which adds a high level of fluidity which is kind of gorgeous is a performance mode so we get up to a native 4k resolution at 120 fps so that's kind of exciting there's also a variable refresh rate option on and off that for you know the tvs that support that and it's kind of awesome to have available so as you're seeing here while we're playing you're going to see on the top left corner of the screen a note that says whether or not the footage you're seeing is performance or resolution and you're going to see that same style until another thing pops up in the left corner so that you know what you're seeing visually. So with that, this is a very interesting entry in the series. I was actually very excited to jump in and finally play it because it's something I've looked at for a while. And I actually had a lot more fun with it than I had initially anticipated. The first couple of hours were actually fantastic. I was having a blast. And then after that, it kind of gets a little bland and repetitive, and I ended up getting you know, fairly bored of it working through the story. Now, with that, the game itself actually does offer a lot of content. And if you like these, you know, flying and, you know, kind of dogfighting type shooter titles, I think you'll actually have a lot of fun with this one. It's a neat story, uh, interesting characters. Obviously, you get to be the rebels or the remnants of the Empire, so you kind of... You know, forge your way for the um, the new rebel, well, the rebel alliance successor. So it's a very interesting era in Star Wars in terms of what's left of the fleets and the, the state of things, where both sides are kind of trying to, you know, deal with stuff. You know, you got the new republic, and then you've got just this crumbling empire that's trying to keep it together. And I thought that was an interesting uh, direction to take for the series. Right now you're seeing some uh, multiplayer, and I see that um, for the rest of the game, I don't really, or the rest of the video, because I don't want to spoil anything too hardcore from the actual game itself. So yeah, there's a good selection of chapters, you kind of go back and forth, because it's a game where you, at the beginning, you get to pick your kind of pilot styles. It's quote-unquote customization, but you're not really customizing it, you're just picking what you want. So they kind of have a few looks, and you get to choose. Anyways, uh, you know you don't see your pilots, so it doesn't matter. Anyways. Like I was saying, you, you kind of go back and forth, so you'll have like two missions where you're the, um, we're just going to call them the rebels, because that's what they are. You get a couple of missions with the rebels, you see their perspective, then you get a couple of missions with the imperials, you get to see their perspective. And it kind of goes back and forth, you know, there's some crossovers with the characters, uh, you kind of get to meet your squad, and there's like a little time skip at the beginning too, which is kind of neat. So yeah, you're kind of just back and forth fighting over these various things. There's a secret plan going on. There's spies. There's missions where you're going out and you're having to do certain guided things. Huge explosions. Big ship battles. It really does look quite epic. I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen from the footage I've shown thus far, like, it's nuts. It's got some insane large-scale, like, space stations and boom and lasers blasting in the sky. It's nuts. It, it really is. This is, like, beyond the visual expectations I had. And both modes, you know, performance or resolution, they both look really good. I will say, though, I kind of tended to go with the performance, though, because the extra fluidity that I was getting really was awesome. And obviously, you're not able to see on YouTube under 20 FPS because they don't support it at this current point in time. And I have nothing that can film under 20 FPS. Just want to make sure that that is across individuals. Hopefully, you can kind of see the difference. But yeah, that's just the state of things technology wise. But I can play in it. That's kind of awesome because it feels really smooth and responsive for your ship, especially when you're doing those like tight angles, tight areas, moving through rocks. It's, it's kind of interesting. And then this multiplayer dogfight here. I went 6-6 six and six in the match, and 4 of my deaths were from asteroids where I kept hitting things, but anyways. So it's kind of neat. I, I like the campaign, I think it's interesting. 
you know, it's, it's decently lengthy. You get to personalize and customize your ship, which you don't really see because you're in first person. I kind of actually would have liked the third person mode. I think that would have been nice. I get that it's more immersive, and if they were to do some sort of VR thing like they you know, other platforms have, that would be really cool. But otherwise, it's kind of like I like to see the outside of the ship. You know, when I play like games, I like to see the outside of my, my vehicle when I'm driving around. Just I appreciate the perspective. But, you know, it wasn't bad in first person. I, I didn't mind it. You really feel like in the cockpit flying around seeing that vantage point you know really feeling like you're just in the action right away in first person anyways yeah you're kind of flying around you're just using all these controls and it's actually really in depth in terms of what you're doing so you can like you see these little tiny kind of icons at the bottom middle of the screen there so on the left hand side you got these different kind of paddles and the x-wings are different too because you get different options so you can kind of prioritize uh, your shields you can prioritize your firing rates or maybe your speed so you can go faster and you can also balance it and you can balance what part of your ship has shields kind of going on it then there's missiles and asteroids and i'm saying this because there's a lot of little technical elements to actually managing your space vehicle <laughs> your ship, your spaceship, you've got to really deal with all these different things and you got to outmaneuver like, you know, kind of missiles and stuff and you've also got the ability to like, kind of space drift in that, which is kind of weird. They teach you all this in the tutorials you're playing through it. But what I'm saying is there's lots of different options for kind of, you know, adjusting your vehicle when you are flying around in space. So that's really quite cool and uh, fairly in depth. But yet at the same time, I didn't find it too complex. I always get worried when we play these flying games, you know, translating over to the, the console game pad, uh, the, you know, the controller, the Xbox controller, you're like, oh, is it going to work? Is it going to work? And it does. It's, it's very easy to understand. Intuitive. You don't even need, like, you know, some people would be like, oh, it's not hardcore enough. I think they strike a good balance between easy to understand and hardcore, because when you're more advanced, you can do more, like, technical moves and everything like that. It's, it's really quite cool. So anyways, past that, uh, we also have the multiplayer, because we talked about the campaign, we talked about the movement, uh, the visuals being just like, stunning, the backdrops and everything like that. It's gorgeous. Anyways, uh, we're, we're talking about the multiplayer. So this is where you can jump in, you just do dogfight, that was the previous match. And then we have these larger space battles. So you can either do the space battle in um, kind of pilots versus the AI, or you can do pilots versus pilots. I would have thought this would be more of a complex back and forth kind of shooting space things. It, it is, but at the same time, it's very much you go, you shoot at things, you either get to advance and shoot at their capital ship, or you get to go back and they shoot at your things. And it just takes forever, and yeah, I wasn't huge into this one. Uh, we're just kind of showing off against the AI here. You actually have to progress, if you didn't know, to uh, I think it's level 5 in order to unlock uh, pilot versus pilot. I guess this is to kind of give you the technical know-how. They do have tutorials for the modes as well, if you're having any issues understanding any of your goals, but I think they're pretty straightforward. But yeah, I just, I, I wasn't vibing with this mode. I was hoping for more, like, I'm I'm thinking Battlefront 2 classic in space, where you're going, you know, you got the two ships, you're kind of going back and forth. Now, I know there's no getting off and walking around, which actually would have been really cool in this game to have some moments where you're doing that. Like, in the campaign, you're kind of in, like, a... Uh, I guess you could say your cool little docking place. So you're kind of, you don't walk around, it's like a point and click to get to different areas, and you, that's how you meet people and you do your briefing. But I was maybe expecting a little bit of like walking around occasionally, you know, just something like that. But I, then again, this is focused on just space battles, so um, I'm not complaining about that element, I just thought it'd be cool. But this one, I really did think it was going to be a back and forth, you know, try to shoot the antenna, try to shoot, you know, the shields, just like a, a gauntlet battle. Whereas this is more of like a push back and forth. And it just takes forever, and I'm not as engaged with this one. So I like the game. I think it's really great. It's, it's well done, and it brings a good amount of content. It feels like a, a large-scale thing that is smaller in scale, so that's kind of really neat. I, I think you'll have a lot of fun playing it if you like these types of flying games. At the same time, like myself, you might find that you're getting a little bit bored of it after a while, especially if you played it once. I think if I played it in chunks over time, uh, it would have been a lot more enjoyable for me. It just, it seems, you know, it just kind of slow at times, and it, it just kind of takes forever. And then there's, like, a lot of repetition to me in the campaign. Like, they try to do different things, but at the basis of it, you're just flying around shooting things, right? It's not anything beyond that too complex in terms of the style, but still really cool Star Wars game. I love that there's different types of Star Wars games now, finally. And I think this one kind of hits the mark for a niche type of audience, and it does very well at that.